This video was inspired by a post on the forum asking how we can create a spout on a beaker. There are a few challenges here. The spout not only needs to protrude out, but taper down as well. We also have the challenge of blending the spout smoothly with the adjacent faces. A T-spline workflow was discussed in the post. I will be attempting to do this with surfacing. I will start out with a circle sketch. Activate the Surface tab and create a surface extrude with this. In this case, I will be extruding downwards. Keeping the top plane at the top of the cylinder. I'm going to cut out a portion of the cylinder. This will serve as a base outline for the spout. Begin a sketch on the front plane. Draw a vertical line snapped to the top edge. And begin the mirror command. Select the line as the object to mirror. And select the right plane as the mirror line. Create a three point arc that snaps to these two points. I have incorporated these two straight lines to facilitate lofting later. When it comes to lofting, it is always preferable to have a four-sided surface. Also, it is important to not set a tangent constraint between the straight line and the arc, as this will cause an error during lofting. Go to Modify, Trim. Select the sketch as the trim tool. Select the portion to remove. This portion will turn red. Begin a sketch on the top plane. We will be creating an outline of how the spout looks like from the top. I'm going to sketch a vertical line from the origin. Right click on the line and change it to a center line. Start a feed point spline. Snap the first point to one of the corners produced by the surface trim. You will know that the snap has occurred when you see a square icon. Snap the next point to the end of the center line. And lastly, end the spline on the other corner produced by the trim. Click on the horizontal vertical constraint and click on this spline handle to make it horizontal. If we were to start adjusting one side of the spline, the other side of the spline would not adjust accordingly. We need to make this spline symmetrical about the center line. Go to Constraints, Symmetry. Select the two spline handles. At this point, you will be prompted to select a symmetry line. Select the center line to be the symmetry line. The symmetrical constraint will ensure that the angle of the spline handle is mirrored across the center line. However, the length of the spline handle remains independent. So we will still need to add an equal constraint to the two spline handles. Adjust the spine handle until tangency is achieved to the cylinder. You should go ahead to dimension the length of the spine handles. To save time, I will not be doing that here. Next, we need to address the tapering down of the spout. We will be using the intersection curve command to project this downwards. First, we need a guiding line on the right plane. 
Begin a sketch on the right plane. Begin a three-point arc. Snap one end to this point and end the arc directly below this point. Adjust the arc until it is tangent to the horizontal. Set a vertical constraint to these two points. Confirm the sketch. We are ready to perform the projection. Since this projection will be a 3D curve, we can begin a sketch on any plane. Go to Create, Project Include, Intersection Curve. Select the spline and the arc. This superimposes the two entities onto each other. You can see a preview of the resultant line in red. Confirm and exit the sketch. Let's hide the original spline and arc. We need to sketch another spline to control the bottom face of the spout. Begin a sketch on the right plane. Go to Create, Project Include, Intersect. Select this point and a cylindrical face. Click OK to confirm. And start a feed point spline. Snap one end of the spline to this point. Create a spine point somewhere here and end the spline on this point. Create a tangent relation between the spline and the straight line. So we have pretty much created a scaffold for the spout. Go to Create, Loft. Make sure that the Change Selection option is unchecked. Select this edge as the first profile. Select this spline as the second profile. And end the loft on this edge. Click on the Select box for Rails. Check on the Chain Selection option. Select the projected line as the first rail and select the bottom arc as the second rail. For the continuity option for profiles 1 and 3, we shall select curvature and align to surface. The loft will attempt to blend to the cylindrical surface with G2 continuity. For rail 2, we will set this to tangent. Go to Modify, Stitch. And stitch a lofted surface to the cylindrical surface into one single surface body. Go to Create, Thicken. And add a thickness to the surface body. 